At least one Palestinian has been killed and four others, including a cameraman, wounded in a fresh Israeli airstrike. The incident took place in eastern Rafah in the Gaza Strip. This follows another Israeli attack on Gaza that killed five Palestinians on Tuesday. Guinea's coup leaders have declared a curfew across the West African country. They have announced a 32-member interim government and promised free and fair elections within two years. The government insists it is in control of this situation. Guinea is experiencing a power vacuum caused by the death of longtime President Lansana Kunte. Political unrest is rising in Somalia, where new Prime Minister Mohamed Mahmoud Gulat has resigned after being rejected by parliament. Last week, President Abdullah Yusuf Ahmed named him as the war torn nation's premier after he sacked incumbent Nur Hassan Hussein. Polls close in Indian-administered Kashmir as people clash with Indian troops there. Indian forces have been deployed to the region to prevent possible violence by fighters opposed to India's rule. Kashmiri separatists have called for a boycott of the polls. Russia and Ukraine remain locked in a dispute over the price of Russian gas. Moscow has threatened to stop gas exports to Kiev if it does not pay its $2 billion debt. Ukraine is the main transit route for Russian gas to Europe. Nobel Peace Laureate Desmond Tutu has once again called on Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe to step down over the country's ongoing political crisis. He says military force could be used to drive him out of office. The U.S., along with a number of European countries, have already called for Mugabe's ouster. And more Americans are filing claims for jobless benefits amid the country's deepening financial crisis. The U.S. Labor Department says initial requests for jobless benefits rose to nearly 600,000 last week. The figure was expected to stand at around 5,500. Hello and welcome to another press review edition of Iran Today with me, Farhanak Amidi. Now let's take a look at some of the major headlines in Iranian press this week. Majlis Speaker Ali Alayjani stated this week that the current 25% inflation rate is due to the mismanagement of government officials. Speaking at a memorial in Tehran, Lajani emphasized that a reduction in inflation can only be achieved by looking at matters in a scientific way and that illogical solutions will not help in improving the current situation. Quoting a high-ranked intelligence official, a member of Majlis's National Security Committee reported the arrest of a group of British citizens in Iran this week. The MP went on to say that the group were working as journalists at the BBC's office in Tehran and were trying to set up a vast spy ring in the country. They have also been accused of trying to hire a number of Iranian journalists to help with their activities. Following up the suggestion of Iran's leader, gas exporting states on Tuesday finalized the creation of a new Qatar-based forum aimed at coordinating gas policy so-called gas OPEC. This decision was made at the meeting of ministers from the Gas Exporting Countries Forum in Moscow. Malaysian Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi was in Tehran this week to discuss possible economic ventures between the two countries. In a meeting with Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, Badawi stated that Malaysia welcomes the investment of the Islamic Republic in various fields within the country. On Tuesday, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad urged the members of the Economic Cooperation Organization to stop using the U.S. dollar in their trade exchanges. Ahmadinejad made these statements at the third meeting of the economy ministers of ECO member states in Tehran. On Tuesday, in an open question and answer session with government spokesman Ghulam Hussein Elham, some students at Imam Sadiq University criticized decisions made by the Ahmadinejad administration. 
Their criticisms were mainly aimed at the selection of a number of cabinet ministers and the choice of the government's first vice president. On Monday, Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesman Hassan Nagashkovi called the meeting between the 5 plus 1 group members and GCC members in New York an attempt to cause a rift in the relations between Iran and Arab countries. Gashkovi also stated that the Arabs seem to be worried about any potential agreements made between Iran and the United States. In election news, former Iranian President Ali Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani announced that he will not become a presidential candidate for the upcoming elections. He also announced that he doubted his older brother, Mohammad Hashemi, will run for the presidency. Okay, I'm now joined by Hamid Golpira. He's a journalist from the Tehran Times and Ali Reza Bostani. He's also a journalist based in Tehran. Welcome, gentlemen, to the show. Okay, so we watched the headlines. What are the major stories, in your opinion? They could be off this list, in your opinion, Mr. Golpira. What was the most important story of this week? Well, there were a number of stories, like we ran through it, I mean, but I think the ECHO meeting was of some importance and what they mm -hmm. brought up at the the ECHO meeting. Maybe for some of the viewers we should like run by the ECHO is the is the regional mm -hmm. economic bloc which has the groups ten countries, Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and the Central Asian states and Azerbaijan. And mm -hmm. anyway they had, had a finance minister's meeting and, and discussed various things. Uh, one of the main points being that Amijad proposed that that they drop the dollar as as their currency in, of transaction. Yeah, so. um, how, how feasible do you think this suggestion is actually? And uh, how, how was it welcomed by the whole meet, group of people in the meeting? Well, I mean, it's a diverse group of countries. Mm -hmm. So, like, some of them are more dependent or less dependent on the USA. So, they would be more or less, you know, inclined to, to do that. But, like, as compared to the past, where, like, the euro is kind of a more al mm -hmm. an alternate currency, which is a hard currency, which is strong. So, they're. There is like like some other you know means to go to you know if they wanted to have an alternate currency. I mean, not to mention that they could use you know, a local currency if they wanted. I don't know even Russian rubles or Chinese money or whatever. But but anyway, the the, the idea is that there there are some alternatives. Mm. You know, and the U.S. currency is not so much dominating the international scene. Not, not to mention that it is currently declining a lot mm. and becoming weaker and weaker as people don't want to price like oil and various things in dollars, you know, not coupled with the, the well, strength Iran of the did euro. Make that change a well, couple Iran of years on its ago. own a couple of years ago d decided to diversify mm -hmm. out of the dollar and out of like using dollars and transaction. Actually, it seems that they won in that deal and the other countries like Venezuela and so, so forth and so that started to do it also had some benefits mm -hmm. by by not being stuck with dollars that had declining yeah, value. Yeah, the euro was gaining value, so yeah. So they had some benefits from this decision. All right, so that is the uh, important story in your opinion. Well, I think that coupled with this, this the, the, the Bolivarian group of Latin Americas, they also they had a, a, a little meeting with Iran, and yes. that's South America, and that connects up with the whole South-South mm -hmm. uh, cooperation thing. I think these two issues together. Are what were kind the of main harmony. things they discussed in that? Uh, Sitting. Well, they were more about trade and they had like a trade exhibition, mm -hmm. but also to strengthen ties between these countries in Latin America and Iran, mm -hmm. which would be beneficial to both sides. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bostani, what about you? What, uh, what do you think were the major stories of As, this uh, week? As Mr. Gulpira has got his own idea about the, the news for uh, our country, I think the most important news uh, which happened during this week was closing down uh, of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Shirin Ebadi's office in Tehran. Mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, it was uh, one uh, domestic, you know, issue for the Iranian people. Actually, but most of the foreign countries, and especially the media in uh, out of um, our country, uh, have uh, tried to make it a very big problem, and have tried to make it international, and not the domestic one. And they have, you know, the, the broadcasted the, as a international issue. Well, she is an international figure, don't you think they should of make course, it Of course, but the, the problem which happened uh, in Iran, it is mm -hmm. a, a, really a, a, a domestic one, not the international. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I myself believe as long as it is, uh, we have any kind of issue, we have any kind of problem which is internal and which is, you know, domestic one. We as Iranian people, we should solve our problem with uh, ourselves and, and uh, we, there is no place for the other countries to come in. 
you know, mm -hmm. to, to debate, to discuss about our, you know, internal and uh, domestic uh, problems. Mm -hmm. There is no place for them. And uh, I think this is our problem if we have, and uh, this is uh, our people should solve any kind of internal and domestic problems. Do you have anything to add to that? Do you agree with that? Well, I agree that, that, that meddling should be avoided but, and, and should be discouraged. But at the same rate, too, like, like, like we can also do things to prevent meddling, I believe. You know? Right. Like, like, cause know that meddlers try to trick you to, to open the door to their meddling. So some, some activities can be made to, to avoid you know, giving an opportunity to, to foreign interference and meddling. I, that's the only little thing I can that's add right, to that, maybe. I think uh, I've, uh, you know, it was yesterday, I think, that I read some articles uh, regarding to this issue. Um, some statement like this, it appears that the Iranian government do not tolerate the opposition party or something uh, in their own country. I think uh, this is not, you know, they don't have any right to discuss about this matter as long as it is the domestic uh, problem, as long as it is a domestic issue. And uh, it is uh, her and it is our, you know, authorities to talk about this uh, in order to okay, solve but, the problem. But, uh, but that is uh, mainly because, of course, she nobody is a Nobel Peace Prize winner. So, you know, she is in the international spotlight. That's why maybe they actually get into and delve into it even uh, deeper. But now I want to move to another subject, which is going to be our in-focus yes. story, which is the elections. I don't know if you uh, remember, but it was only recently that one of the major principalists, uh, Mr. Bahonar, he uh, he's an MP in the Majlis, he created his own faction within the Majlis. Um, and now this same faction has announced just today in Aftabiyaz newspaper that they will support uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad in real elections only if Mr. Ahmadinejad uh, meets their conditions. And uh, what I want to know is that, in your opinion, why did Mr. Bohonar create this faction in the first place? And now that we have such a faction and such a split, how will this impact the performance of the principalists in the upcoming elections? You first, Mr. Gokpira. Well, the whole thing about what they call the principles or the conservatives is that they're, they're, there's a little bit, there's starting to be a few trends, mm -hmm. but like maybe two major trends, like, like one that they sometimes call pragmatic mm -hmm. conservatives and others they call more uh, like, I don't know, they could call them sometimes they'd be hardline or maybe mm -hmm. it's hard to like exactly define them, but anyway, or, or, or more, more principle is principle mm -hmm. in their own mind. But, but anyway, the, the, these, these, these two groups happening and maybe some, some sub-fragmentation within these two trends beginning to happen. But I mean, o overall, like, I mean, various group, I mean, each one has their own, like, various agendas and so forth. You know, like, the pragmatists have some problem with Mr. Ahmadinejad and, and some of the, like, what, the ones who consider themselves more hardline or more pro Ahmadinejad as, you know, as the current line has mm. gone on. And, you know, and some of these sub-factions beginning to, to coalesce and, and happen amidst these two broader trends could also have, you know, certain, maybe certain other, a little bit different agendas. Maybe, maybe they're, they're a sub-faction of a faction, you know, they're, you know, to rise, to bring to the fore, you know, their ideology, if they have some slightly different interpretation will this, of the Will this actually make uh, principalists go, go forth stronger in the elections or no, in your opinion? Well, it depends if they fragment into like pragmatists and subgroup of the this kind of pragmatist and that one, and then a subgroup of that. And if they would have several different candidates, it would it would you know it would diffuse their energy. Okay, but Mr. if they Boston, return again to a single candidate, I, I don't know what they're going to do in the Mr. election. Mr. Boston, I would like to know your opinion on that. How, how do you think, think this will impact the press? Yes, process? I think uh, when they have entered into discussion so early. Uh, probably, it is my own opinion, I, I, of course, uh, probably uh, they may feel, you know, some fear, they may feel danger in order mm. not to be succeeded in the uh, close future in the presidential election. And that's why they have uh, come into this discussion so early in order to make their position so strong mind opinion, you know, mm. public opinion, I mean. Mm -hmm. but, but how do you think this split will actually, uh, is it even a split? in this uh, political front? Like the uh, principalist? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it won't impact them as much? As of course not. Okay. There's, um, 
if I'm not wrong, yes, it was the representative of Elam province in Madras. Mm -hmm. He actually noted that uh, there is not enough youth.